Hello, this is Effort 1821, the video tutorial for the refactoring of the EFWA and EFWE code onto Entity Framework. Our product owner and project mentor is Professor Masu Sajari, and the Effort developer myself is uh, Matteo Vergara. Um, so the overview. Uh, first we'll go over the high-level architectural changes and then uh, show how some of the legacy code translates onto the Entity Framework code. Um, so the project services, repository pattern, and the split up of the uh, registered user controller. Um, so the previous architecture uh, developed by EFWA uh, used this presentation layer, the business layer, uh, RESTful API, and data access. So here you have your front-end controllers that connect to the views and the models uh, which pass on data to the views as well. Uh, you have the user entering data onto the controller. Um, this passes uh, data through the business objects. Um, the business objects uh, direct or route um, data from the presentation layer onto the back-end uh, controller. So uh, here the web API, the backend controllers uh, would connect to the data access layer where data uh, would then be written to and read from the SQL database on the effort server. And of course this is all modeled around the entities um, in the database. Excuse me. Um, so the next uh, slide is the Entity Framework architecture. Um, you have the Effort SQL database here on the left. Um, on the top here, you have the Web API. Uh, well, actually, you have here the video, the Visual Studio Effort solution. So this Web API dot DL is the project for the backend controllers. Um, here you have the backend controllers and uh, what we now use are services, um, which we will go into a little more detail later. So this uh, backend uh, layer connects to the repository layer um, and this is very similar to the previous data access layer um, and I believe this should actually say data access slash repository because um, it, it will be called data access in the in the new branch but in my branch it's called repository um, so this it does the same job reads and writes um, from the effort SQL database um, and then we have the effort controllers here um, as the same as the the previous architecture with the views the models the user and so forth. This doesn't change much um, and neither actually does the web API uh, backend except for some references but that's all. Um, the business layer also doesn't change much uh, and it's also all modeled around the aggregate entities. Um, we, we call them aggregates but these are the entities. Um, what The major changes are mostly here between the repository, the web API, and uh, the effort SQL database. Um, next slide. <coughs> um, so these are the changes to the backend refactoring, uh, the data access repositories. So um, this class uh, now is the one, I'm, I'm sorry, this project, the data access repositories, um, perform the reads and writes to and from the effort database. So um, if we take a look here in the branch that I was um, doing some of the refactoring, uh, if we go into the web API, um, Sorry, the data access repositories. We can see that uh, 
we now have repositories. Uh, so for example, uh, I think it's best to start with the base repository. So uh, all of these repositories inherit or implement um, this base repository. So the base repository will do basic um, uh, read and write operations to entities, and entities modeled in the database. So um, you have uh, add, delete, get a specific uh, entity by ID, um, get all, and uh, update a certain entity with uh, a, a database entity with a uh, an entity that we're passing. So. <coughs> So um, we also have web API services. These uh, do the job of the uh, stored procedures which were once on the effort database. So for example, we previously had the um, accounting create account stored procedure. So what this would do is uh, we would pass it from uh, let me go to the uh, actually I have it here I'm going to the account DB in the previous project so this was um, prior to uh, refactoring so we had account DB and from account DB we were passing uh, the user ID and the account type and then these optional parameters for uh, external ID um, so we're passing user ID and account type and then calling this stored procedure SP create external account um, well actually that would be for the external account uh, let's look at actually um, this is what I meant the SP create account uh, we're calling this create account. So um, if we go to that, we were passing these two parameters, the user ID and account type, and then um, calling this stored procedure on the effort database. Um, we were passing this type ID from the account type. We're joining from a different table. Um, a balance of zero initially passing the user ID and the current timestamp for the create and update times. Uh, if we go to now the web API services, um, we'll see that it's much simpler. So now we have an account repository in the data access project. So this account repository inherits the paste repository so it can do the get all, delete, insert, and so forth. Um, and we override the update so that we can update the DB entity um, properties with whatever we're passing. So here's where we populate um, a database object with something from the, the project solution. And then we hit the base update with the DB entity. So um, if we go to now we were talking about the stored procedure um, the stored procedure stored procedure would now fall under the web API services well the equivalent of the stored procedure so if we go into the account service um, we'll see create account which we were looking at previously so now um, actually from uh, the backend controller layer will be receiving these um, parameters. So we can pass the user ID and account type to this function in the account service. Uh, we create an account um, entity based off of the entity layer. Uh, and then we populate its uh, fields. As simple as passing this, these two parameters to the user ID and type. Um, the balance we said was initially zero, so we're setting it to zero. Uh, the uh, create and update times are date time now, and the optional parameters for the external account. 
and then uh, what the service layer now does is you know it's performed the uh, operations on the data that it needs now we need to write to the database so we hit the account repository and we want to insert a new account since we're creating an account so we pass our new account and return true which will then you know return a 200 OK um, back up from the back end layer to the front end layer um, so uh, the web API controllers now use services so I'm going to uh, for this one I'll show a different one so the MT4 server service um, the controllers the MT4 server controller prior used um, the account DB uh, I'm sorry the MT4 DB um, to handle writes to the database now we use uh, the services so uh, for example, deleting a server, we hit the MT4 server service uh, delete function to delete a specific server. Um, so that's pretty much it for the backend. That is the uh, bulk of the changes for Entity Framework. Um, there are a few uh, changes made to the front end. Um, this was mostly just a design decision by uh, the EFWA team. Um, before um, EFWA team, you know, they, they did a great job of um, designing uh, the basic trader, developer account, guru admin, and MT4 VPS management um, functionalities all within the registered user controller. So it was, it was a pretty large controller. Um, as you can see, just by here, we have 1600 lines. So uh, we split it up into several controllers. Um, you know, we use the entity framework uh, pattern here with the base controller to implement the other controllers. So um, here we would have uh, we split up MT4 VPS onto the MT4 server controller. Uh, the Guru account uses a mix of the expert advisor and a few others, and and so forth. So um, uh, that is pretty much it for the refactoring of the EFWA and EFWE code. Um, thank you. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me um, or the professor. Uh, I do not have the my contact information, but uh, let me write it real quick. It's... Um, That is my email, and uh, I'll just uh, put the professor's information in the YouTube link uh, description. Thank you, guys.